Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and it's been a while since we had uh, Brother Greg on with us. Uh, since that time, which you guys know, his wife had passed away. And uh, Brother Greg, it's good to have you back on. And and how are you uh, doing now after this time has passed since the passing of your wife there? Well, thanks for having me on. And I'm doing really, really good. Um, uh, better. My mom says I'm doing 10 times better than she thought. Amen. Amen. I, I mean, my wife, my wife's in heaven. I have nothing to worry about. You oh, know I, what I, mean? I believe that 100%. 100%, brother. I'm right there with you on that. Um, you, know, you knew her a little bit. Yes. You even prayed with her when she was dying in the hospital. Yes. She had amazing faith, brother. That's the one thing I noticed about her when I spoke for her the first time. Uh, and it was actually a time when I prayed for her. And then she recovered very well and did well and then ended up and, and probably like you said you know we the sickness she had she'd had no doubt for a long time just didn't know it um you know and and that could have been what was going on the first time when i prayed for her. i have no idea i just i noticed well, that she had a lot of faith um her body was eat up with cancer from her brain to her toes every organ in her body shut down wow My. so it was, it was a terrible painful painful thing that it was just terrible oh my goodness brother we went home and happily yes amen Amen. stinking world yes yes well speaking of a stinking world there's one thing and i'm putting my phone on silence there because if i don't that thing won't hush up on me here (laughs) there's a lot going on and I know that we've talked about a lot of things, Brother Greg, but I tell you, there's, I know you know a lot more, and uh, uh, you sent me a message, and if I remember right, it was about the creatures coming up from uh, from inside the earth, and and I can't help but think of the biblical passage about that, where it says, fearful sights for those things coming up on the earth. Man's hearts are going to fail for fear. And, yeah. and and that's something that was brought up to me by my contact in Washington years ago, uh, several years ago. He said, Steve, he said, people have no idea the types of creatures that are inside this earth. And uh, he said, and the problem is, he said, they're not going to stay contained forever. And he said, and there's a lot of people inside the intelligence community that even think of that verse about man's hearts will fail for the fearful sights of those things coming upon the earth. And he says, you know, he said, look, dinosaurs, he said, they wouldn't cause a man's heart to fail for fear. He said, they can be pretty big. He said, but what's inside this earth is much worse than what a dinosaur can be. Listen, they, uh, here's what the deal is with me and those. I seen them with my eyes and had to deal with them. So now I don't see them, except sometimes I see an outline of one. So I'm fighting the same battle now as I did when I was under there with them. I'm fighting the same battle. I mean, I need people praying for me like you wouldn't believe. I'm miserably worn out. Just You just wouldn't believe it. But the things that are down there, the Nephilim, and <laughs> it's just not the Nephilim, it's just every sort of an evil imaginable thing that you could ever think of is coming up and and they and they're fearsome to look at you know there's been a lot of sightings of the rake now and um the rake was an alien entity at one time but he looks different now and um i see almost every day where somebody's seeing creatures every day i get uh posts from news break and and, and a uh, creature seed with giant claws and giant mouth with teeth and blah blah blah. And I think it's Paris, if I'm not mistaken, that just recently had an incident where the um, aliens, the entities, is what they call them, were inside of a inside of a shopping mall. Well, you had I don't know about Paris. I know they had the one down there in Miami no, uh, where yeah. that happened. But yeah, well, you know the thing no. is. 
I've seen the one in Paris that I seen. Okay. They probably took it down, but it was the same black translucent beings that they seen everybody running for the hills. Well, you know what was really strange, Brother Greg, is that before the first incident even happened, uh, my contact in Washington told me, he said, Steve, he says, I'm just going to tell you now. He said, we're fixing to go into this time frame where, where dimensions are going to merge in together. And he said, mm -hmm. and that's going to cause sightings of creatures, he said, in other dimensions. He said, in other words, there's several, several what he called it, parallel universes to ours. And he yeah. said, as our dimensions get so close, the walls become so thin that the next thing you know, you could be standing in your in, st or standing in your bedroom could be some prehistoric looking creature or an alien or anything. And he said, and it's just because of the way these uh, dimensions are, are merging in like that. When I told him, I said, well, you know, in the Nakamadi writings, there was a very interesting uh uh, uh, writing in there that spoke of that exact same thing said that at the end of times said the dimensions will begin to collapse upon one another and that the fearful sights that will be seen as a result of these things and so yeah. I said I, can, I can't even imagine then what we're about to see no I know you can't imagine um, you know I got to see them in a controlled condition even though I didn't consider it really controlled. It was controlled enough to keep them from coming up. But they're coming up now, and you got to remember what God said about them. They're all murderers, all of them. He said that Satan was a murderer from the beginning. And so all they care about is how many people they can take down and eat and, and with them. And, and, and these things with parallel dimensions is exactly what's going on. Um, well, you know, Chuck Missler, you remember Chuck? Yes. Um, Chuck said, remember, he figured out there was 11 dimensions. And, and now um, CERN is saying that there's 30 or 40. And, you know, CERN did their big experiment during the eclipse. They fired up and collided two um, pieces of lead to create the heat that they needed to open up the door. I mean, why they, would you want to do that? You know what's interesting? You, the CERN people, always try to say, uh, "We're not here for doing interdimensional things. We're, that's not what our real purpose is." What do you know, Brother Greg, about CERN from the different jobs that you may have worked on in time past and stuff? What What all could you tell us? Well, I can tell you that the quantum computers that they're using are enormous in size and expensive and they come out of Berkeley and um, they were doing that then and they are trying to get another dimension they've already they don't care about other particles they want to get another dimension I know that for a fact and I do know that they've been successful even when I was you know they were running colliders everywhere you know now China's wanting to build one bigger than CERN but CERN is an evil, evil place. Um, I heard anyway from somebody that worked there that one time they opened the door and they had about a third of their crew commit suicide right in, in like 15, 20 minutes time. My goodness. You know, I did. there yeah. was one particular time that they opened up the dimension and I was hearing from Washington at the time that they, they brought in a creature that ended up... Uh, killing two of the scientists there at CERN uh, before they could get the uh, before they could get the thing powered down that it would close that dimension so that they could keep this thing out yeah they, you have to close the dimension keep now you, you let them through and then you close it you let them through and then you close it but I heard about that same incident I heard you know I didn't see it I just heard about it Right. right now, when you were, I know you've been down in Dulce. Mm -hmm. Can you share? I mean, keeping in mind, I mean, a lot of people have watched our interviews that we've done before, but there's always new people coming on, Brother Greg. If you can share a little bit about what you experienced down at Dulce, uh, I have heard, I mean, I've never been 
down inside of Dulce myself. I have been over there to that part of New Mexico. I got to see about, oh, I think five different fly, what we call flying saucers. Uh, uh, at the time, I never knew that you could actually see that many in one place. But as I was told, uh, there's a lot of traffic because of what goes on at Dulce. Uh, all you have to do is have night vision to be able to see them, uh, and 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 it, it shocked me. I, I really got got an eyeful at least from that aspect. But what I've been told, this down there on on minus seven, is yeah, is just there's no way to humanly describe it. But if you can share a little bit about what you know about that, that'd really be interesting. Well, I can tell you that level seven, that right there is just total chaos. The con continuous 24-7 chaos. And um, they, don't, they don't know, you know, you got, got you got scientists and stuff there that are not Christians and don't know anything about that, you know. And so they don't know how to contain it. And I didn't know how to contain it. I wasn't a Christian then. But I can tell you this, that it was as close to hell as I ever want to get. Uh, I've seen things there that were just unspeakable. Um, and the Illuminati does a ceremony there too um where they shape shift and eat children and, and this and that um it was just disgusting you know it's hard for people to believe it when i say it but i'm telling you right now i, I see it in my own eyes i see it <laughs> well you know you know greg one of the things that caused me to reach out to find you to begin with is because so much that I had heard from uh, the, the friend that I have, a colleague that I have that's in D.C. there, uh, that had told me about the horrendous things that were, uh, you know, all kinds of things. But that was just one of them. And he told me, he said, you know, Steve, he said, you read like Pegasus, you know, the half horse, half human. Uh, you, you, we, we see the movies about mermaids and things like that. He said, he said, we have those things in captivity for one. And he said, Pegasus, for example, he said, you go to the, the seventh floor, uh, I call it minus seven there at Dulcie. He said, the experiments that are done with the, with the, um, uh, the, the, the human and animal DNA. Yeah, he said, is unbelievable. He said, literally, he said, this is no lie. He said, they took a man and a woman and had cut them in half and then reattached yep. them together. And he yep. said, yep. and 90% of the nervous system was intact and functioning. He said, but just to put these people through this. And I said, where do the people come from? He said, homeless people are normally captured and brought down in these bases and these experiments are done on. He said, our scientists work with reptilians. He said, and that, he said, Steve, he said, it'll just, it's disgusting to even think about. And he said, and if you work down there, he said, you don't dare go out and say what happens on the outside. He said, because the reptilians have a device to where when you come back, they can literally know what you said, know what you thought your thoughts were, know what you did in, in a certain length of time. They know everything about it. He said, so if you went and said this something to somebody, they will know it. Oh, yeah, they, they know everything. Um, that's why, you know, like my address being on, um, you know, your site, how long do you think they have known about mining your address? It doesn't take a rocket science to find out. Oh, they've you always, they've, I mean? yeah, it's not like, so I tell my wife, I said, honey, you gotta worry about it. They've, they've known where I live for sure, right? Yeah, they know where me and you both live and they have for a long time, but the reptilians are in con total control right now of the governments. Total control. Um, they're responsible uh, for the Israeli war, you know, from, from Hamas bombing them. Um, Hamas is run by the reptilians that don't even shape shift back into human in their own form. They come to them. Um, it's terrible. Uh, and you know, when they're here, I can tell you this, if you're in a busy shopping mall or something, you've walked past one and don't even know it. Well, you, here's what's all right. I, I'm going to share something with you. I discovered since we talked to last and this I found literally um, I forget which book it was in, but it's in one of those writings I discovered in Egypt and Nag Hammadi writings. Now, there's different 
Sometimes I just say Egyptian writings because there's a lot of different books that have been discovered that are not part of the Nag Hammadi writings that were discovered in Egypt, Syria, places like that. So I've looked yes. at all kinds of documents, but this one particular one was uh, in the collection of books in Nag Hammadi. And this was a quotation from Jesus. He said, there are many animals in human form. That blew me away, but it shouldn't have. You know why? Because what did he say about the Pharisees? He said in Matthew yeah. chapter 23, he said, you serpents, you, you vipers, and called them a generation of vipers. So what is that? That is animals reptilians. in human form. Right, reptilians. Yeah. And that I heard, you know, I know all about that when they split in half. And what was weird is it worked. You know I, I, mean? I know. What that, kind of thing? You know, they, you know, like, uh, you know, half man, half horse, and that's not fake. None of that is. No, it's not. Uh, it, 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 listen, the uh, people back, you know, thousands of years ago when the Nephilim were around would laugh at us right now for even questioning it. You, they would you're, think you're that right. They were if the, in other words, the people that were the, the Nephilim and then back then, um, seen us today laughing about it and cut, you know, saying, oh, there's no such thing as that. Th they would laugh us out of town because they know they're real. They were done doing it ever since they've been around, you know? That's right, brother. That is so ever true. Since, ever since they've been around, they've been doing it. And I think that the people back then, and even the disciples would, think well, how foolish are we not to believe these things you know what i mean well you Even know they didn't you know they, they they didn't maybe didn't see them i don't know but i know that they felt them they knew what they were up against well you know you take like like for example what did paul say he goes like this he says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but right. against now when you when he says the word principalities that word in there, brother, is archons. Which is the prince over uh, area. Yeah, uh, that is these demons that are on that other side there. They're just in a, they're yeah. in a dimension we don't see. But now that the situation that's happening on the earth today with the magnetosphere, and I know Mike from around the world just recently, uh, well, I know he speaks about this quite frequently, but he's always trying to warn the people. He said, look, the magnetosphere is about to come down. And when it does, it and I've heard this from Washington long before Mike began. Mike is just basically disclosing in his mind. He's so, so intelligent and so knowledgeable with his scientific background. He just mm -hmm. knows how to articulate a heck of a lot better things that that you've known i've known for years and finally he's been i guess given permission to bring these things out and he's saying things that i've been telling people i can't tell you how many years they just thought i was a blooming lunatic oh i've been a blooming lunatic for the last 20 years being on shows uh you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> no, bro. Uh -uh. but uh, the family turns against you everybody does but you know, the yeah, thing man. is, though, Brother Greg, when I first heard you, and I, I, I went, I looked for every video I could of things that you would talk about, and, and I went in there and I got my wife, and I even told her, I said, everything practically, not everything, I said, but pretty much everything that this man speaks about, I know about it. And I said that the difference is, Greg knows it firsthand. I said, mm -hmm. the information I get out of Washington, it's the, the, the friend that I have there that he knows it. And, right. you know, he's, he, he tells me, he says, I've seen a reptilian. And he said, that's, he said, I was, and I asked him one time, I said, what do they look like? He said, well, he said, picture Arnold Schwarzenegger as far as his muscle build at his heyday. He said, put that on a lizard. Mm -hmm. He said yeah. they kind of got like a lizard looking head. He said, but taller. He said, uh, probably nine feet, some of them as high as 12 feet. Yeah. 
he nine, said nine to 15 feet. Yep, and he said, he said, and the thing is, he said the anatomy is just like a man. He said the oh, only yeah. difference and, is they got a tail. They do have a tail. Yeah, they do. And, uh, and, and he said that he said there's no way to describe. He said in stink. He said, my God, Steve. He said the most horrible oh, smell you'll ever smell. It's like a swamp gas. It's terrible. And when we were around reptilians, some stink worse than others. Some species, you know. There's so many species there. I don't even know it. I think, here's what I think. I think now, since I've been out of there, that every bug and every kind of animal that we can imagine has been manipulated down there. And I heard where <clears throat> this guy flew a Piper Cub, and he flew over Dulcie. And when he did, he said he seen the ground unzip just like a zipper. Open up and then zip back close. And you know why they do that? No. To let the gas out. Oh, the wow. Smell. And that... the gases are toxic. You know, when you start going that deep in the earth, you start getting into radon. And so it gets pretty toxic. And I, I think I'm having a lot of health problems because of it. But I think, you know, you sure that I'm just, I'm good, you know? Amen. Um, yeah, Amen. I got pneumonia today. Yeah, you, you, they won today, okay? They won on you too, but they didn't defeat us. That's right. That's right. They got us. In other words, they blindsided us with a fiery dart. And and we got hit. And now me and you both got pneumonia. And, you know, so I have to combat that. And that's why I always ask the people to pray for me all over the world. Just pray for me. Amen. And Amen. as long as you pray for me and keep me safe, I will keep telling you what's going on. But I got to be prayed for by the people because it's been getting to be, honest to God, it's been getting to be unmanageable. Well, you know, Brother Greg, I can certainly understand what you're saying. And and, and there's one thing, too, um, I've always noticed. If if God is revealing something to me that, that he wants me to bring out to the people, I'll get attacked like you've never seen before in your life. I and, didn't know that I had pneumonia until today. That's the day I was going on with you. Amen, right? And, and yeah. I'm still, I was, uh, an hour before I came on with you, I started running a, a it's not a bad fever, it's a low-grade fever, but you know, here it is, 72 degrees in the house, and I'm shaking so bad yeah. because I feel like I'm freezing to death. Yeah, and sweating at the same time. Yeah, and all it is is now that sweating. That's just that's, that's exactly now. I got I'm past the sweating part, so you're still a little little earlier on than I am on that. Well, I've had mine for over a month and didn't know it. Oh my See, goodness, had, brother Greg! Oh yeah, I've had it three times, and I called the doctor today, and he, he's we're friends. Yeah, and he goes, "Why in the world? You know how your body is. Why didn't you just call me right away?" I said, well, I thought I could fight it up. He goes, man, you can't fight everything up. And I got a good friend that tells me, you're not made out of steel. <laughs> Amen. You know, nobody's made out of steel. And if you were made out of steel, it rusts. So, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. I like that. So, Bro Brother Greg, my, share share with people. I want, I want, if you can take people even deeper maybe than what you have shared before, Mm -hmm. people need to know brother Greg because we are running out of time and people need to know just what is really out there uh, you're not going to say anything that's going to shock me well you might I don't want to say you're not you might because I don't I know I don't know it all by no means but uh, yeah. but you know we're, these are biblical things are about to unfold right before they're unfolding already before a lot of people's eyes and that's what people don't know what to do but this might help people just to know how to handle those things that are, that are about to appear. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Well, let me tell you, first of all, <clears throat> that um, I said before things that were still classified. And did you know that all the things I have with friends and government, that all the things that I said that were classified, they went ahead and declassified. Them. I, I have, That's interesting you say that. Even for myself, because people have asked, they'd say, how can you 
work with the CIA and then be able to go out there and blab your mouth about the things that you do. I said, there is a law. If you've been out for 30 years, I said, and for me, I've been, I said, I left in 1991. Mm -hmm. So in 2021, I was allowed to run my mouth all I want. I said, no, I don't I mean, now. right? So it don't mean that they can't, they, they might not decide to take, as my boss said to me one day, he said, uh, this, this is my old boss back from back then. He said, Steve, he says, you know, cause we were talking about the Kennedy assassination. And he said, you know, he said, somebody's going to pull up in the van at both our houses and put hoodies over us. And we're going to disappear. <laughs> said, no, you, let me tell you what happens. They don't worry about us declassifying it because remember when I told you I left there, my exit interview was go ahead and tell a lie. And um, they don't care about killing us. They're not going to kill us. Now, they may call us and send, send, I got a warning message from one twice already since the first time I was on with you. I've gotten warned two times. And, you know, and so, I mean, I don't push that envelope. Once they warn you to stay off that subject, you kind of, try to figure another way to say it and that's what they told me you did we don't want you talking about this you need to figure out a different way to present that i got so, so the <laughs> same thing was told to me when i started getting into the um skull to brain technology now that's old technology now but uh, oh, yeah. a colleague called me up and he told me he said steve he said son he said listen he said they'll kill you for that one he said, yeah. you know a lot about it, but you need to keep your mouth shut about that issue there. He said, don't go into that one. Right. That's what happens to me. But as far as getting killed or anything, they're not going to come and kill me and me. In other words, it would just validate everything. Right. They don't want martyrs. They, right. They do not want martyrs. So I told my mom one day, I said, you're the safe places you could be is around me. <laughs> my, <laughs> My dad, when he was alive, said, man, I've got the Iraqi flag in my front yard, the flag of ISIS on top of my roof, and the, um, the Muslim Brotherhood flag in my backyard. He said, I've got the FBI, the NSA, and the CIA watching me 24-7. I never felt safer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. He said that. And my dad was not afraid. He he was like me, me and my family are warriors. I mean, everybody and every generation of my family has been to war. Every single generation. Yeah, same on my side as well. Every one of them. My yeah. dad served and, three and, tours in Vietnam. My grandfather was in World War II. Both my grandfathers were in World War II. One mm -hmm. of them was having bullet holes shot through the roof of his car when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. He was driving down the road with my grandmother in the back seat. He said the bullets come right down through the center of the car. Never hit either one of them. He said, you're talking about them big old bullets from these doggone airplanes. Yeah, and 30 millimeter round. Yep, yep. And, uh, and, and then my... My other grandfather, he was over in the, the European theater um, and served over there under Patton. So, yeah, yeah. Patton was a tough, tough old broad boy. He, he didn't put up with nothing. No, he didn't. No, he and didn't. you know what? I think that some things he did were wrong, but he was the best general I believe there ever been on the face of the earth. Yeah, he, he was. Told us he wasn't afraid. To Remember what he said? We ought to go after Russia right now before while we're there. Yeah, you know, my, I'll never forget, did. too, my, uh, and, and anybody that might know, of course, I know you would know Joe Frazier, the, the boxer. He was actually yeah. in my grandfather's platoon. My grandfather was his sergeant when Joe Frazier went into the military. Oh, wow. wow. So, yeah. A lot of interesting Steve, history both, there. Like I know Stephen Greer and them, we both know a lot of people you know i just don't try to bring them out into anything um especially stephen greer you know he's safe now uh, because nothing he's saying is is uh mattering anymore i believe honestly this is my belief that they want us to say it so they don't have to well here's, they can call us crazy they, instead of them. but listen they can call us crazy instead of them yes and so 
they're letting them see it. But guess who's really going to do it? The entities themselves are the ones that's going to disclose. All right, the brother Greg. All right, all right. Let me say let me say this real quick then. Back when they first came out with the, uh, the disclosure, uh, Shadow Down was the code name for the White House disclosure. In fact, I made it public just just to irritate the mess out of the White House, right? Uh, <laughs> I've done we, that all, before. we all had code names. The CIA <laughs> had a code name for disclose, disclosure, and I used to know almost all of them. I forget what they are now. NSA oh, had one, CIA, the White House had one. And when the White House was doing the one that was public, you know, where they were, like they show the right. Nimitz with the, with the uh, Tic Tac shape uh, aircraft. And then I tell the people, you know, I said, that wasn't alien. That was one of the ones that we had made. We had, yeah. we had reverse engineered it. I said, you know, I said, they haven't showed in their disclosure, they've not shown a single, UF, a genuine UFO at all every single thing they showed was reverse engineered but you're no. right brother greg what it was this is what this is what mike contacted said to me he said look he said there this before they ever even started doing the disclosure he said we're about to start doing disclosures and uh and i i have a feeling i was getting some of the cia stuff to disclose because i'm being told about it and of course that's the branch i worked with so i'm sure that's why they told they're telling me about these things but he mm -hmm. said they he said the aliens want the information disclosed he said because in 2026 they want to be able to come here and actually coexist with the humankind on the earth that's what i was yeah. told then yeah and you know what's going to happen they're going to come and and uh, the majority, listen, people think everybody's going to heaven. I got news for you. When those things come, that's a great delusion. That's a delusion of theirs. Project Blue Beam and all these other um, yep. operations that they've got going on. It's nothing but a delusion to make you think. And then people are going to say, that's God. Right. You know, and if you don't know what we're talking about, you're liable to fall into that same trap. Don't fall into that trap. When you see those things, they are not God. God wouldn't do that to us, number one. And when you see these ghost hunters on TV and Ouija boards and all these ghosts and of a children, children and stuff, God would not do that to a child. That's right. He wouldn't, and he wouldn't do it to anybody. He loves us so much. He wouldn't do that to anybody. He tries to get people like me and Steve here and all of us to tell you so that you have an idea of what's coming and how to combat it. And the only way you can combat it is with the word of God. Period. Amen. Amen. Period. That's how you do it. And but you know what? People like me and you, we get worn out too. Just like everybody else anybody else. I get worn out from the devil. I get so worn out from beating on me, beating on me, and beating on me. You know what I mean? And he beat on me so much now I'm sick. He, yeah. He's relentless. And so you've got to be relentless. I told a friend, one of my best friends in the world uh, the other day that what I, what we need to do, because we pray together a lot, is we need to take the battle to them. Don't let them come first. Amen. We need, Amen. we need to take the battle in the spirit and carry it over to them and keep them at bay so that we, we got all the tools we need with the armor of God and the field, shield of faith and all this stuff. We got all the tools we need, and if it was just that and John three sixteen in the Bible, you can win the war. You know, because there's nothing impossible for them nothing. that are in Christ Jesus. And you know, I want to bring something up real quick, brother Greg, because of what you said mm -hmm. a moment ago about these blue beam projects and things like that. That mm -hmm. Jesus actually warned the people of that, and I don't know if they realize when what he was talking about, or which where he's talking about this at. When he said, when they say to you. Behold, he's in the desert. Or behold, he's in the secret chamber. He said, don't go. That's right. Don't believe and it. With the, the secret chamber is the underground bases. And the other ones on top of the ground are operate uh, Project Blue Beam, which knows how to open up portals in the sky. I'm sure that you've seen him do it with the spiral. And yes. have you seen that? I've not actually seen that happen myself. I've seen videos where no. people have showed that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yes. Well, I've seen, and every one of these uh, underground bases has a 
a number. Uh, okay, you got area 51. So that means there's 50 other areas before that one. Because just south of Salt Lake City is area 52. So they're in every state. And the S4, the S is what really blew my mind. I asked him, what's the S stand for? And he goes, staging area. I said, staging area for what? He goes, beats me. Well, I know what it is. They're going to, they're protected there. And, you know, they broke their contract with us a long time ago by right. uh, abducting people and keeping them. Yes. The deal was they were supposed to give them back and, and put safely. But that was under Eisenhower did that did that. Yeah, that was Eisenhower that did that. And also, how you know, the, the report was that 100,000 children went missing, right, um, from the border. 100,000. How do you lose that many people? Oh, they're in the sex trade. In this and I don't doubt that some of them might be. But I think it's more sinister than that. Even. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that they're being abducted by aliens because nobody knows them. They're considered aliens anyway, illegal aliens. And so they're, they're abducting them and doing these grand Diosho experiments on them. But now the time is getting short for them. They know that. They know time's short. And um, so, of course, they're going to. In other words, they're pushing ahead with the agenda really quick now. So people need to catch on real quick. And what's going on and start reading the Bible, get born again, because Jesus is the only way out. And you, you know, Brother Greg, like, like you say there, too, the Bible says Satan knows he has but a little time. He knows that. That's the hour you know. we're in now. And and let me ask you this, Brother Greg. We know about the Hydrogen Collider in Switzerland. Now, I've been told there are more. They, and they would not, I specifically got into the issue about Antarctica. And I mm -hmm. was told, Steve, that issue is classified. That issue is classified. The only thing I've been able to, I've been able to get a little bit of information from there, but let's, not much. Let's hear what you know then. This is what I know. I know that the Palladians are down there. Right. I know that, and, too. You're right. And, uh, you know, they're as evil as any of the others. A lot of people think the Palladians, because they look white, aren't evil. Yes, they are. They're Nephilim. Look how tall they are. They're the, the ones women. that took Hitler in, by the way. That's it. And also that they have a collider there and that they can open. They've uh, got enough entities there and less human controlling it there's more entities than humans controlling and so they control what goes out and comes in they just tell their boss the, the civilians the workers all they do is tell them this is what we're going to do and there's nothing you can do about it that kid you're going to let it happen mm. and it's a it's a in, in, in the in the Antarctic is a tropical paradise a lot of people I, don't know about that. Yes, and, and I'll tell you something. Linda Moulton Howe, when I went to Dulce, New Mexico, while I was there, I traveled with, or actually met up with my uh, Washington contact, and uh, they had been wanting to meet with Linda. <clears throat> now, this is something I'm sharing that I've never shared before, Brother Greg. Okay. I was told that at the time said that the government multiple times tried to take her out. They never were successful and they finally just left her alone. Said, but they were always fascinated. And, they, and, and he shared that with her. And we had a private meeting with her. And he shared that with her once he felt comfortable enough to talk to her. He said, I want to say something to you. He said, the people in the CIA always want to know, how did you know the information you knew about the cattle mutilation? 
He said, because we already knew it. We, in fact, he said, in fact, we had to stage some of it, fake some of it. To try. He said, they were trying to mislead you. He said, we would send agents to tell you false information just to try to get you to go down a different road. He said, but we always noticed you would figure it out. Then you well, and you and he said and you wouldn't report it. He said that's what amazed them about her. He said she was one of the most amazing and most thorough investigative journalists they had ever saw. He said because no matter how they tried to put her and steer her into another direction to get her away from the truth of what these entities were doing, she would always get right back on the right track. Yeah, and me and you are no exception to that. Um, I figured out, and I'm a dummy, man. I got a GED. You know what I'm saying? Um, I made it high up on the list because of. Um, there's a friend that I'm going to talk to you about when we get up there. This guy, he just retired from the Defense Department with the Navy, and he called me the other day, and I've known him for about 20 years, and wants to come on your show. I'd love it. Okay, okay. So we'll get him on there, and. Um, He's got his own uh, station and everything. So he asked me, could I, would I ask you to come on the show? Absolutely. And there was a, another woman, she's a Messianic Jew, who has her, who preaches on the, on the YouTube and uh, Facebook. And she wants to come on. Uh, goodness, I'm yeah. becoming popular now. <laughs> yeah, you're getting popular now. But I would, I would like, I'd like to be able to keep my word. And I said, if anybody can do it, I can. There you go. And because I know you have respect for me and I have respect for you. And you know that I wouldn't put somebody yes. who didn't know what they were talking about. Amen. Amen, but brother. The woman, the woman actually seen Jesus and Jesus, Jesus touched her shoulder. That's how she was a Jew. And she, uh, you know, struggles like everybody else does on every, every day. But she's on radio three times a day, seven days a week. Hmm preaching the word and she wants to talk to you but my other buddy now we, he's, he's come over here and stayed with me before and i've come up to i went to his house and stayed with him and he was working then but he worked for the navy work yard so he has information about weapons and things that you would just blow your mind he's told me a bunch of some of the things but here's the thing he worked at the places i worked at wow he can confirm me he can confirm it. Amen. So, Amen. So I'm going to call him today and tell him, uh, do you let me have him get a hold of you? Absolutely. Or? You can give him my number and, and I'll get with you to get his number and we'll get connected because, you know, the thing is, Brother Greg, the more that people can hear confirmation, it's just like when you come on, I've told them so many of these things for so long. You came on and then you are just a confirmation and you add to so much more uh, of things that they'd never heard before. And so yeah. this, and of course, well, a lot of, this is why I think it's thing, so important. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I just, I finished it up. Go ahead, brother. Um, the guy from the DOD he um, can give you information about things that I don't know about. But me and him, well, I do know about it now because me and him talk freely. And he had the highest clearance there was. He had to go to Hawaii. I bet he went to Hawaii two, three times a year, a month, I'm saying, for secret experiments. And so I think that he would be one of the greatest guests. And he's a born-again believer, too. He's not a Jew. He's German. Amen. And he's born. He's in. He's a born again Christian. I'm not going to say his name on here because it wouldn't be respectful. But he dated him, and the woman asked me to please ask you could they come on your show. Amen. Amen. Well, I would definitely love to speak with them both and uh, and get them on and and share their their insights with people, brother Greg. So what else, brother, can you share? Because I know I loved it when you talked about Antarctica there, uh, you know. And I mean, there's all kinds of things that are going on in this world. You know, I mean, everything from Bigfoot, uh, which is an interdimensional right. creature you've got. And of course, that's in your neck of the woods as well. And, yeah. uh, you know, as a, a, the contact I had in D.C., 
he said that they believed, he said that, he said Bigfoot was one of the most mysterious creatures of all for them. And he said they believed that they were put here on the earth as like gatekeepers. And he said, they're they, interdimensional. Uh, do what now? They're interdimensional. Yeah, he said they're interdimensional. And he said that, he said they feel like, he said the people in the government have, have really had come to the conclusion that they feel like they are descendants of the Nephilim that were on the earth back uh, before the flood. Yeah. Yeah. And we, that's why nobody's ever killed one. You can't kill an extra-dimensional. Unless they're, once they physically form in this, this round, you can kill one. But can he switch back faster than the bullet can get there is the thing. And he's, and he's told me, he said, they still, he said, the CIA still tries to capture them. And he said, they're just not yeah. successful. Uh, he not said, he said, you, he said that he said not to mention, he said, Steve, do you realize one of those things can run 135 miles? He said, we have clocked them at 135 miles an hour. Yeah, I knew they could run fast. I didn't know it was that fast. I knew they ran faster than 60. He said, it's unbelievable. He said, it's unbelievable. He said, not to mention, he said, if you're trying to trap one or something, he said, all of a sudden, he said, jump. He said, my goodness. He said, but when they jump, next thing you know, you don't even see them. They're not even there. No, they jump hundreds of yards away. Yeah. In one leap. Hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand yards. <laughs> and he said, then they can yeah. just go from one dimension to another. They can and I think that those are the reptilian um, sub bosses. I, I believe um, I wouldn't believe doubt that a bit in the world. Mm -hmm. That that's I never heard that, I mean, but I that's interesting. That. I couldn't prove that, but that's what I believe. Because uh, hey, people's killed reptilians before, and then they melt, they melt away. But I've never heard of anybody killing a bigfoot. No, neither have never. I. Neither have I. Uh, yeah. What do? What, what, do Tell us some of the things, brother, brother Greg, that you know about the reptilians that you've experienced yourself. Okay, now the reptilians are popular in subway systems where they live. Okay, like New York subway. Right. They're down in there, and they have people that stand outside, and they and the, the reptilians throw rave parties. You know what rave parties are. I've heard people. that they name before, that. but I don't know much so about they it. Ecstasy and they take ecstasy and they dance and all that Okay, stuff I got you. Bars. I got you. Okay. okay. And um, so they hold a lot of those. And when you go down there, you never come out. And wow. they wrap you up in cellophane tight, nice and tidy. And they lift you up and hang you for meat later. And that's the truth. They are in the subways. Um, they prefer to live in the subways. Because they they can come up any time without being seen, and like you said, they're so massively strong. Picking up the lid of a um, manhole cover is nothing for that. No, not at all. So, but the the majority of the ones that I know about, no, I'm not, I'm gonna say majority. I'd say half live in the subway systems of big cities. I've always heard too, as far as the big cities like California, and they said that. They said they they do love to eat human meat, and they said uh, that's they said a lot of your homeless people go missing because there's so many homeless. And he said it's just like a, he said I hate to say it, but it's like a smorgasbord for them. And, well, uh, it makes me think that Biden let them in so they wouldn't so they eat those and not leave us alone. I never thought about that, but when you brought up the part about the missing children. That seemed to make more sense as well. And, yeah. and of course, the thing is, the elite, in order for them to keep the power that they have and, and, and to stay in their status, I can see where they uh, would comply to the demands of these entities. I mean, people don't realize this really. What is it? You've made a deal with the devil. That's what they've done. They've made a deal with the devil. And, you can and, break the rules. Yes, and they and they're going to bow down to whatever these entities say and want done, um, and, and and that's that's what I find interesting. Right, you're exactly right. Um, and the thing about it is, 
they, they all of these entities that mean you talk about feed off fear. So if you're not born again and don't have that armor of God on, you're going to get hit with, with it. You're going to get hit hard. That doesn't mean you're going to hell, but that does mean that you, um, you're going to suffer and it's not going to be, in other words, with nightmares and stuff, it's going to be a lifelong thing. So what I've decided to do, especially today, was make it my lifelong battle to take take the fight to them. I don't want them on my property. I don't want them zooming over my house. Amen. You know what I mean? So yes. if you can keep them at bay, then you have nothing to worry about. This is a safe place here where I live. Everybody on my road is Christians. Every single one. There's only six of us on about 400 acres. But we are all Christians, and we barter, and we grow on food. We help each other when we're needed. Uh, my neighbor came and cut my grass today because it was long, and she knew, knew I was sick. And You know what I'm saying? We all help each other out around here. And believe it or not, that's the way the church is supposed to be. They never had buildings. They went to each other's house. Wow. You know? Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. And I remember the one neighbor you had when your wife passed away. Uh, yeah, that's was, the one you're talking about my grass. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I got a question for you, Brother Greg, and this is from yeah. my FEMA contact that I have. I have a uh, an engineer that works with FEMA that's really in the know on a lot of crazy things. Uh, but they asked here, uh, the AR, AI Army, do you know how many there are or how big that is? Well, there's more than a million. That's interesting that's right. you say that because I remember my DC contact. He was, I say, and I put it kind of like in the past tense uh, and do pray for him uh, yeah. because he has been in really serious um, physical condition now for a, a, over a year. Uh, he's in and out of the hospital constantly. I feel like he's been targeted personally. Uh, well, before we go any further, yeah. people don't have a clue. What me, you, the buddy, my buddy, that's going to call you what we go through every day just to keep them, keep everything balanced. Amen. The, the battle that we go through every day. Yes. Without people's prayer, we're not going to be able to make it. When people like us, there's, we're warriors, me and you and these other people, we're warriors. And if you don't rise up and be a warrior, they're going to overtake. And yeah. that's, and they're, and they're supposed to overtake. It's biblical to say that. And, uh, but you want to keep them at bay as long as you can. And I don't think they can harm a hair on your head as long as God is on your side and you're really into God. Yeah, that's that's true. Really that's into. true. So I'm going to make it my lifelong project to be spirit. Well, hang on one second. We lost Brother Greg. Let me call him right back. They know, they, they know, brother. They know they're trying to cut us off. That's for sure. Yeah. Exactly let right, let, let me, both, before I lose I some of all. these, let me ask you some more, brother. The bunkers in Denver, yeah. are the elites dying now by the entities? Well, the entities just go into another elite. Okay. I got you. So it doesn't affect them. They move on. Right. The underground pyramids, are they being exposed now due to the earth changes? Now, I think what what they mean by that there is, uh, like I was told, like in the case of Antarctica, I said because of the, the melting ice down there soon, there's going to be things that they can't keep hidden any longer. And I think that's the question being asked that on that, because there are a lot of pyramids. And I was told that the pyramids... Are, were actually designed to, to generate uh, energy on the earth. In other words, they, I was told that you could literally drive a car down the road uh, with from pyramid power, that you could drive it and it would recharge your car without ever plugging it in type thing. So I think that's what they're asking that for. Yeah, zero point energy. I guess that's what that would be called, right. So, so the question is, is, is are these pyramids you. being exposed due to the earth changes, but I guess because of whether it be earthquakes or, or, or floods that are washing dirt away that are causing things to get more and more exposed. They're, they're, they're trying to kick us up again. You're getting garbled and 
I'm hearing weird noises coming oh, through. Oh, wow, brother. All right, let's try this. The giant cities under Egypt, how many bring? How many are there, or do you know? How many what? Giant cities uh, under uh, that are in Egypt. The giants? No, they're... they're, they're uh, they're saying that they're giant cities underneath Egypt. Are you aware of that? Yes, I'm aware of that. And there's giant cities under China. There's giant cities under Australia. There's giant cities under the, in, in, uh, in uh, America. They're everywhere. They, they're everywhere. They have infiltrated the earth. Period. Now that I do know too, because I know the reptilians have, they, I was told they have just a network and they literally can travel underneath the crust of the earth from one continent to the other. They can. Wow. You, mm. you know, people say, oh, that's too, too fantastic. Well, remember, you're not dealing with human people. You're dealing with spiritual beings. Right. And, you know, they, the, you know, demon technology and the stuff that we're getting with AI and all this and that. Where do you think that came from? Stupid people that tech get out and be seen every day? No. They come from extra dimensional dimensions because we would never even be as close as we are to the weapons that we have if we weren't for them. But they'll never show you how to make a weapon that'll destroy them. <laughs> Isn't that the truth, right? Absolutely the truth. Yeah. Wow. Uh, black goo, is that what they found recently in the permafrost? I didn't know there was a discovery. Yeah, I read about that. Um, I don't know what that is. Okay. I didn't even know about that, period. So I'll have to, I'll see if I, I can find out that. myself. I don't know what it is. Okay. The silent military in the U.S., the next three months will they attack U.S. citizens? I didn't know we had a silent military planning anything, but uh, do you know anything about that? Well, I know it's eventually going to happen. Yeah, I do know. I do know that there. To me, from what I've seen, for the most part, not to say that the U.S. military is not willing to do some of the same things, because they got some pretty crazy young people nowadays that have no feelings for humanity yeah. any longer. So they're very easily the programmable. Guys do it. Right. The older guys that disobey orders. Right, and they 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 don't care. I mean, I've seen interviews of of uh, soldiers that have said, you know, they've said in the interview, you know, when the time comes and they tell us to shoot Americans because they will not put down their weapons, we're going to shoot them. That's right. And not only that, um, one friend of mine, a good contact, told me that uh, he had a friend that was in the C-141 gunship and they were doing dry runs on how to blow churches up. They were flying over uh, cities and stuff and they were mocked drilling blowing churches up wow i yeah. wouldn't doubt it uh what do you know about a portal in the grand canyon and the question is asked are they using that portal to uh to take people to other galaxies yes there is a portal down there there's more than one yeah i do the know grand there canyon is one is a dangerous place to be it's a dangerous place to be wow. not because of the snakes and the floods and stuff you're it's just uh, i you couldn't get me down there i don't care what you paid me you know it reminds no me of the native in, in, native american indians one time i heard this uh this one i saw a video on youtube i wish i'd have saved it the guy talks about the native americans took him they blindfolded him they wouldn't let him see but he they took him to this one tunnel and when they went inside the tunnel inside the grand canyon he literally went into another world yeah i've never been down there but i've heard the same story i have no no will to want to go down there i don't have no will to want to see any of them to be honest with you but i know i'm going to and like I said before, to most people, it's going to be, what the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. To people like me who've seen it, it's going to say, not again. Right. <laughs> and no, you know I, I, mean? I, I, mean, I know what you're guy. saying. And I've not seen it yet, personally. I just heard so much about it. So I'm sure I'm still going to be in shock, period, right? So the sun well, is... I will be, too. I mean, I'm, a, I'm not scared of it. I just, um, if I die, I want God to take me out. I don't want to die at the hands of my enemy. Amen. I'll die 
where I'll be their slave. You know Amen. what I mean? And, Amen. Um, I, I agree with you there, there, brother. I, I, I couldn't if agree I'm more. To right. Take out, Lord Jesus, you'd be the one that does it. Right. Amen. You'd be the one that does it. Don't okay. let the enemy have me. All right. A couple more, brother. Uh, the sun is waking up again. Is the polar shift occurring this year? Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody can answer that one for cer certainty. I know that we're going to have a polar shift. And the sun is definitely waking up because it's causing some tremendous problems on this earth. That's, In fact, that's yeah, what I was told, that the storms are, you, all the storms, the weather changes, the earthquakes, the volcanoes are all because of what's happening on the sun well you know it's been the magnetosphere in those solar flares and eventually once they pierced it i believe that once they pierced that the demons are going to roll in through there too well that that's exactly what i was told that once that magnetosphere is broken down enough then the dimensions then you can't separate it then then you're open to both sides then the you know, uh, there's all, and of course, like you said, even inside the earth, there's, you know, there's different things that are keep those demons back, but soon that's all. I think it has a lot to do with this binary system that's causing all the havoc on the earth and a combination of that and them running all these hydrogen colliders. They're going to open a portal. I think that's really the opening of the portal of the abyss that allows Satan to enter into this dimension. Well, I know that CERN right now is trying to open the abyss and the top of the bottom of Saturn. And Saturn happens to be a uh, happens to be a planet for the reptilians. Yep. So they're trying to open it up. In other words, the God must have them trapped down there. Um, oh, I didn't so know them. that. Wow. Yeah. And see, I, I've heard that that's that is a home base for reptilians is, is Saturn. Yeah, but remember God said there was some of them so wicked he had to bind them up. Right. And I think that's where he put them. And that's why there's a perfect hexagon shape on both the top and the bottom and it swirls around and around and around constantly. That's where they're at. They can't come out of there. But I'll be doggone. I didn't even know to, that. If, yeah, if there's a way to transport them, it's through the, the colliders. And the collider can reach that in light speed. Oh, yeah. can reach that. And so they think they can bring them through with the colliders. They're wanting to release what's there because they're curious to see what it is. See, their curiosity is killing us. Yep, you ain't kidding there, brother. What is going to be the false flag that shuts down the U.S.? That there's going to be civil war and there'll probably be mock wars here and there. And it'll scare everybody and they'll pick up arms. Yeah, they'll and do then, something then to kick it off, kind of right? Huh? Yeah, and and I heard about that as well. That they have they've been training. Uh, it's actually told me told to me this one guy that escaped it. Uh, he says uh, the way it was described to me is like the Manchurian Candidate. They're just gonna they're like programmed, and then suddenly they're just gonna go off. They're gonna cause the civil unrest, and then that's what'll cause this all to get going. You got it right on the head. Hmm. Okay, now there are two more two more questions, brother brother Greg. Okay. The arrival okay. of entities is that next year? You know that's a hard one to say. I would uh, I would have thought they already came. Well, they have already come, and they're showing up everywhere. But I think by next year, that um, here's what I believe too. Trump could be the Antichrist, even though I like him. You know, <laughs> Un unfortunately, he is going to play, uh, uh, you know, I, I know what you're saying. He's done a lot of good for this country. There's a lot of good about him. But I think the problem that it, there is, in fact, I heard there was a very nice statement Mike from around the world said about me, which surprised me. Somebody, he was on his program the other day and they said, you know, uh, Mike, what do you think about Stephen Benoon? And you know, he, he, he's always beating on Israel. And Mike answered him back and said, he said, Steve Benoon does not beat on Israel. He said what he does is he's exposing the corruption in the government of Israel. And he says, and let me right. tell you something. He said what he's doing is right. He says, because if you want to ever see evil on this planet, because Mike's very strong supporter of the Jewish people. 
He says, but I am if too. I am as well. He says, but the thing is, he says, he said, the evil in the government of Israel right now, he said, is the most evil and crooked there's ever been. Yeah. He says, so don't Lord. think, he said, don't think that Steve is against Israel. He said he's not, but he's against the corrupted ones that are in that country. Oh, yeah. Um, all of them, Netanyahu, all of them are kind of corrupt. Uh, Ex exactly. I mean, I, I, mean I, know, I know Hamas started that before, and you do too. Yeah. But here's the bottom line. You don't starve people to death. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You That's don't right, let brother. women and children run around and fall over in the streets dead because they're starving. That's right. You know, you, one thing Israel did do is they do give them advance warning that they're coming. And but there's nowhere else to run. That, that's they exactly got right. In Rafa, and there's nowhere else to go. And that's evil, man. So See, that's, that's that where are, I think are, Trump is. Want to say they, are, that they, they say are Jews and are not. Right. That, that's exactly it, brother. That's, and by the way, there, uh, uh, Mike Adams just had on uh, Christopher Berinkins, who's a Jewish man, Jewish scholar, and that interview was incredible because he talks about how IBM developed a machine back during World War II that they could separate who were the real Jews from the fake Jews because they were wanting to kill off the real Jews. And that the ones that were behind it was the Jewish Congress. Yeah. And you know the guy I'm telling you that wants to come on there? Yes. He has the deepest knowledge about that very subject than wow. anybody I've ever met in my life. He knows who they are. Excellent. Excellent. I can't wait to yeah, talk to he's him. He's going to be an excellent interview for you. I'm telling you, you're going to say, wow. Because we used to call each other, and he's got all my interviews. If you want any of them, I'll tell him to give them to you, but he has hundreds and, well, literally thousands of hours of me and him talking. Private. Wow. Mm. That's so, amazing. Um, yeah, he'll, you know, I'll tell him to give, give Steve whatever he wants you know, of, of me. But he can confirm right then. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. He, well, like I said, that, that's another, that, it's just another voice of confirmation because we're truly, Brother Greg, you know, is better probably than anybody that I would know, you realize that we are in a real battle against the most evil and wicked that man could ever even possibly imagine. Uh, Listen, I can't even imagine. I thought I've seen it all, but I've been, I, I was told when I was down there, this isn't nothing. By them, told by them, yes. you wait. We're going to have our chance. We're coming to get you. You know, but it's just a scare tactic, but I do believe them. You know? Yes. I mean, they, they're coming, but um, but they're going to come and rush everybody is what they're going to do. And, and you got to be ready for it. You know, and if you run out of bullets, the word of God, listen, God doesn't say anything about slingshots like he did David. He doesn't say anything about guns and bullets and projectiles. He talks about his sword of the spirit. Yes. That's the way you fight spiritual warfare is with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. 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 I remember one brother I know, he told me, he said that when he, he said he was outside, he said he had gotten somehow or another, he ended up outside his body. He said, he said, I don't know how I ended up outside my body. He said, but this one entity was trying to take hold of my body. He said, and I don't know how in the world it happened. He said, but I just went to push him back. And he said, it was like a bolt of lightning. He said, that, that entity went flying back like into eternity. He said, I never knew that I had so much strength in all my life. He said, but I guess your well, soul is what's powerful. Well, you know what it is? We have the power of God. Yes. We have it. Amen. We just don't know how to use it. But we're getting ready to be faced with something that in other words, God's going to allow this to happen so that we lean on Him. Amen. Because Amen. there's no, nothing else that can save us. Wow. Amen. Brother That's Greg, can how can people mm -hmm. support you? Uh, I know you don't have any other really means in, in this life, so what could people do if they want to be able to support the, support you uh, and your testimonies that you give? You know, um, I really do need some support right now. I'm down so low because of what I've had to do, you know, my wife being gone and things. And just, 
regular expenses and being by yourself, you know, you can't cook for just one. So you got to cook all this food that goes to waste. But they can give me at 325 Angora Drive, Bostick, North Carolina. 32018. All right, brother. And I'm going to have you text that to me. I know I've got it, but if you'll retext it to me, I'm going to include it in the description below for people to be able to. So if you don't remember what Brother Greg just said, just go in the description of the video here and you'll be able to get his address right there and you can uh, send a love offering to him. Uh, I do know that when his wife was, was alive that, you know, there that, you know they had the combined income together and I know he doesn't have that any longer. So I wanted to bring that up so that those of you that feel in your heart to want to help support Brother Greg uh, and his walk with the Lord and testimonies that he gives, that would greatly be appreciated. So God bless you. Thank you so much. Yes. You're very Would welcome. Brother Greg, we love you, brother. And I'm so, I, I tell you what, it's exciting for me to see you a fireball for Jesus Christ. Uh, that is, well, that's a blessing for me. I get worn out sometimes so bad that you think I was going straight to hell. <laughs> 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 I mean, my, neighbor's the one, my neighbor's the one that pointed out that I was sick today. Wow. I mean, here I am, I got fever, and, my, and when I lay down, I feel like I'm drowning, and land comes up when I throw up, I just, and she goes, there's something wrong with you, you can't get up off the couch, and I can't. I get up and I do, I'm trying to get some painting done, and I do a little bit, and I'm just so tired. Right. And right. I remember, when she said, Greg, you don't look good. And then I remembered, man, I've got the same symptoms of pneumonia again. So I called the doctor, and he see. He said, I don't have to see. I know exactly what you got. You got pneumonia. And I said, well, will you call me into antibiotics and stuff that I have to see me? He goes, absolutely. So, I mean, I'm lucky to have a good doctor. And he's, he's Jewish. Santa Amen. Is his last name. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. So. Well, we yeah, love you, brother. You help me. I sure would appreciate it. Yes. Love we, you too, brother. We we do love you. And Stay God. on for a minute, up here. All right, I will. God bless you, brother. I'm going to close the video out. And thank you guys for your love and support. We appreciate it. Uh, and God bless you. And don't forget, in the description below will be Brother Greg's uh, address. Thank you.